The Canadian Handicrafts Guild had a significant influence on Inuit art, and accordingly so did the Manitoba branch. The preservation and collecting of Indigenous art was actually one of the motivators for the establishment of the Canadian Handicrafts Guild. This walrus carving from Inukjuak is an example of a typical Inuit carving that the Manitoba branch began selling and exhibiting in their shop in the early 50s. Since its establishment, the Canadian Handicrafts Guild was a promoter of Indigenous art. The founders of the guild, Alice Peck and Mae Phillips, certainly had a romantic and nostalgic view of Indigenous Canadians, which was not uncommon at the time. They saw the work of Indigenous Canadians as pure and authentic, untouched by European influences. In 1949, James Houston brought the first Inuit carvings from the north for test purchase by the Canadian Handicrafts Guild. Encouraged by Bessie Bowman, the Manitoba branch received their first shipment of Inuit carvings in 1952, and they were exhibited and sold in the guild shop. Mary Karstens, a member of the Manitoba branch, worked as a volunteer in the guild shop when they began selling Inuit carvings. She worked with both Bessie Bowman and James Houston, and she comments on her involvement in this oral history interview from 2004. It was Jimmy Houston who started it. He came into the shop one day, and he had five or six smallish carvings. I wondered if we could sell them. He says, uh, I'm trying to promote this as a craft for the carvers in the north because the Eskimos are starving because they haven't got work and cost of living is very high. And he says, if they could get something where they could get some cash, it would mean an awful lot to them. Mm -hmm. So uh, I contacted Bessie at that time. She was in there. And uh, we decided that, uh, yes, we could sell them. In fact, we sold them that day, just Isn't like that. that right? And uh, asked Jimmy to send us some more, and he did. So I think we sent him a check with a word in it, please send some more carvings. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we, they sold like hotcakes. Mm -hmm. The guild shop would receive shipments of Inuit carvings twice a year, and when they did, they would often put aside works that were of superior quality to be purchased and placed in the permanent collection. This tusk carving was purchased from the guild shop in 1952 for $20, which is approximately $170 today. The cost of these carvings were very reasonable. Some were available for a mere $5. During the 50s and 60s, the guild shop attracted massive crowds wanting to view and purchase Inuit carvings. The shop only kept between 20 and 30 percent of the sale, with the rest going to the artists. By the mid-60s, it was reported that the shop sold over $110,000 worth of Inuit carvings. This feature in the Winnipeg Free Press dating from 1956 exemplifies this demand. It states that there's a tremendous demand in Winnipeg and throughout the entire continent, and in Paris as well, for Eskimo art. The Guild certainly became known for their involvement with Inuit art, and one of their centennial projects was commissioning this work from the well-known Inuit carver Inutsiak. Inutsiak was from Frobisher Bay, and this soapstone carving depicts a group of figures performing daily activities, including a mother giving birth. Because the Manitoba branch's involvement with James Houston and the exhibiting and selling of Inuit carvings in the Guild shop, the Manitoba Crafts Museum and Library was left with a beautiful collection of Inuit carvings.